Hey Joe, this week I want to talk to you about my hatred of textbooks. So this vlog was inspired by watching a podcast of Matt Miller who wrote a book called Ditch That Textbook. Before I get started, there's a few things you need to know about how lucky I am with my teaching situation. So I have an 85 minute prep every day to plan my content and then I teach three sections of biology and I'm the only person who teaches sophomore biology at Aurora. So that gives me a little bit more freedom in how I want to teach the curriculum. Now that you know how spoiled I am, I want to talk to you about a few reasons why I don't use textbooks and then also some of the different things that I do instead of using the uh, scripted curriculum or the read the chapter and then answer questions approach with students in my classroom. One of the reasons why I don't like using textbooks is because I am a super passionate teacher of science, I love biology, and I struggle to get through a textbook. And if I don't like reading textbooks, how much worse is it going to be for my students who aren't near as passionate about it as I am? And on top of that, are they going to like science more or less after reading the chapter? If the answer is less, then I fail as a teacher. Another reason I don't like textbooks is because I don't think that's a skill that is very important for students, where they get one source of information and they have to try to understand it. If I want to learn something, I'm going to either Google it or YouTube it, and in 15 minutes, I can have the content understood. And so that's what my students do now, and that's especially what I think students are going to do when they're 30 or 40 is they're just gonna search for that stuff online. And so it's much more important skill for them to have is being able to look at maybe 10, 20 different sources and decide which one they think is good information and then use that source in a way that they're gonna be able to learn the material. Find a video or find a website that matches your level and then see if you can learn it that way. Another uh, idea that our tech coordinator is kind of been pounding into our heads is the idea of creation versus consumption. And if you look at the old textbook style, where you have this all-powerful textbook gods giving you all the information that you need, and then you just sit there and soak it up like a sponge while you read through the chapters, that's completely 100% just you trying to consume the information. And I think research has shown that that doesn't really work that well, especially with today's students. And so trying to shift the mindset from, as a teacher, what are you going to give me as a student to, as a student, what am I going to do or what am I going to make to be able to learn the information? And so that's where one of the ways not having a textbook helps is you can incorporate a lot more activities and a lot more hands-on approaches to get students to take ownership of their learning um, and to develop their learning in ways that work for them. Another big thing that ties directly into that is I always try to te connect concepts with activities. Uh, and so when you're using a textbook, it's very easy just to kind of go with what the textbook shows, which tends not to have a ton of hands-on activities. And so I, even with my students, when I give them some information, a lot of times they'll just write it down, but it'll just be words on a page until they find a way to do something with it to make it their own information. Even my students will tell me this over and over again. It's like, uh, Mr. Tim, it doesn't make sense, doesn't make sense. And then as soon as we get the activity, all of a sudden it's like, oh, now it makes sense. And so being able to connect those activities with the content, I think, is a huge uh, area of importance. Another thing that I don't like is here in Nebraska, we have the NISA standards, which are pretty unique throughout the country. So no textbook company is going to design a textbook for the Nebraska state standards. And none of the textbooks are going to follow the same path that I wanted to lead my students through. And so if I, even if I use a textbook, I would be jumping from chapter to chapter to, to teach it the way I want. And so to me, it makes more sense just to not waste my time with a textbook and just teach it how I want anyway. The last reason why I don't like textbooks is because I spent $100,000 and four years of my life becoming an expert at teaching science. So I am a professional science teacher. And so I feel like I'm wasting that investment if I'm just reading from a script like a robot. Uh, I'd much rather be able to use my creativity and all the skills that I've learned through that training to be able to make impactful lessons for my students. Uh, I don't think that a textbook company from who knows where, knows what's going to work with my students in my classroom better than I'm going to. So since I put all that investment into becoming a good teacher, I might as well use it to develop my own ideas and my own content. So a few things that I do instead of reading from a textbook is presentations. Um, presentations I really like, especially with my labs, 
Um, so when I was in high school and I did a lab, I would just like read the directions one through 15, follow the directions, have no idea what I was doing, then fake my way through a few questions at the end and get a hundred on the lab. And so I don't want my students to have that same bad experience that I had. So what I do is I'll maybe give them instructions for the control group, but then I'll give them ownership of the lab and have them develop their own variables for their experimental groups. And so they have to understand the content well enough to make their own variables. And then on top of that, they're going to present that information to the class. So again, that leads to a deeper understanding of the content where they're taking ownership of their learning versus just following a recipe to get the results you want, like typically you find in a textbook. Another strategy that I just started this year that I think is going to work really, really well next year is a little bit of student choice where I tell my students, okay, here are the five, six things that we need to know for this standard. And so you find a way to learn the material, whether that's from YouTube, different uh, resources, uh, diagrams, you learn the material, but that's kind of just like what you do from reading a chapter in a textbook. So to take it to the next level, now you're gonna teach your classmates so you have to think of ways that are gonna help them learn the material. So what are things that are gonna be better than just presenting the information? Are you gonna do an activity? Are you gonna have a demo? Are you gonna show a video? And having students think about, okay, this is what I need to learn. It's probably the same thing my classmates need. And then figuring out a way to teach that, I think is super powerful. All right, so this week, the highlight of the week um, is I got some teacher swag. What? So at the end of the year, our principal sent out an email survey where there were like four questions. Uh, what classroom would you most like to be in uh, other than your own? Um, a relationship that you were proud of developing with the student. Um, something funny that happened with your colleagues. And the Sports Center top 10 highlight of the year. Um, and so most of them were just what the administration looked at and thought were cool. But the first one was just purely from teacher vote. And so I was super, super honored to get that award, uh, the Teacher Choice Award. So I had more teachers say that they wanted to be in my classroom than any other classroom, which um, I was super honored because those are my peers. It's not like the administration. It's not the students. It's my colleagues that are saying that they would be interested in seeing what I do. And as a science teacher, where a lot of people uh, have a bad past with science teachers. Um, it's kind of cool to see that. Now, I think there was a little bit of uh, luck that went into that because we have two fantastic Spanish teachers. I think what happened is they kind of split the vote between the two of them and they let me kind of sneak in through the back door to get the award. But hey, I'm going to take it whether I earned it or not. The struggle of the week is just uh, getting all my grading done because with all the Skypes that I did, I was kind of running a little bit behind uh, what I normally do. So we had our final unit test on Tuesday. So I had to get that graded and back to my students by Wednesday. So that was a late night grading. And then Wednesday, we took our cumulative final over um, the last six units that we had. Um, and I had to get that graded and back to them for Thursday, which was our last day of school. So that was a little bit stressful getting all that stuff done. But then the hardest part was uh, saying goodbye to my students. I've had an amazing group of students this year who made this year the most fun. I'm going to really miss them next year. Um, so that was kind of tough to say goodbye to those great, great kids that I had. Last thing is the activity of the week. This is my absolute favorite activity that I do all year. My students love it, and that's called Jelly Bellicus. So it's to teach natural selection and a few other concepts that go with evolution. So what I do is I have a, a paper box lid that I fill with pine shavings, and then I put eight different colors of jelly beans, 10 each, so 80 total in there. And then they have to use tweezers to pick out the jelly beans. So they have 40 seconds to pick out as many as they can. We do that four times. So they've usually removed about half of the jelly beans. Um, and then we can see natural selection happening because they usually find the brighter colored ones. Um, and then the tan ones or the ones that have camouflage or crypsis tend to survive better. So we can talk about um, directional shifts in populations towards uh, one extreme that's an advantage. Um, and then I switch it up for the next section and now the bright red ones that have tiny little yellow specks, those are poisonous. And then we've got some Batesian mimicry going on where there's also red ones that are delicious, but they look like the harmful red and yellow speckled ones. So then they avoid all the red ones. And then we can look at disruptive shifts where the bright red ones are surviving and the tan ones are surviving. So the population is uh, dividing. The students love it. I love teaching it. A lot of fun. 
way to wrap up the year with that fun activity. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Educating Joe. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And to all you other Educating Joes out there, have a great week teaching or starting summer vacation.